Hi there, I'm Stephen McKinsey. I'm a co-author on this Respirology publication, which was a randomized controlled trial comparing nasal high flow therapy and non-invasive ventilation in COPD patients with chronic respiratory failure. So hypercapnic respiratory failure in COPD is associated with high health care costs, reduced quality of life, and is a predictor in itself for increased mortality. We know that NIV, non-invasive ventilation, is the gold standard for treatment in of hypercapnic respiratory failure in the acute setting, but may be poorly tolerated with intolerance rates of up to 20% reported. There is an unmet need for a treatment that is better tolerated and easy to administer, and possibly providing another treatment option for those patients who cannot tolerate NIV. Preliminary evidence suggests that nasal high flow therapy may improve hypercapnia and COPD and be well tolerated but there's limited data directly comparing nasal high flow and NIV in this setting. We decided to compare the two in people with COPD and chronic hypercapnic respiratory failure, testing the hypothesis that these patients in a stable state would cause a similar change in PCO2 but have improved tolerability. This study was a randomised controlled two-way crossover trial. We took 24 participants that had COPD with chronic hypercapnic respiratory failure and they received two interventions, nasal high flow therapy and non-invasive ventilation and then crossed over to the other intervention with a washout period in between. We used a capillary blood gas sample to confirm hypercapnia and then used transcutaneous monitoring to continuously measure the PCO2 change. They received supplemental oxygen to correct any hypoxia. Non-invasive ventilation did result in a greater reduction in transcutaneous CO2 compared with nasal high flow to a small degree of 2.5 millimetres of mercury, which is of uncertain clinical significance. In fact, there was quite wide variability in response with maximum reductions in nasal high flow up to around 30 millimetres of mercury and non-invasive ventilation up to 15 millimetres of mercury. Certainly overall, nasal high flow was better tolerated than non-invasive ventilation. So these findings suggest that there may be a role for nasal high flow in this cohort of patients who are either unable to tolerate non-invasive ventilation in the first instance, or used as an intermittent therapy during rest periods from non-invasive ventilation, either for comfort reasons or to expect to rate sputum or for nutrition, and this may then extend the overall treatment time for NIV use, which is critical to reverse the hypercapnic respiratory failure. To read the full details of our research, please click on the link below.